forte de Trump. Well, first time in this final. And uh, as we were saying earlier, this format of having no warm-up in the hall is definitely one for the experienced gymnast. She didn't really get her feet high enough over her head when she hit the platform that time, so she had to squeeze the pike somersault in for longer than she really wanted. And then it's always difficult to find the landing. Point seven three three, so into sixth. Two more gymnasts to go. This is Erika Fasana. Performed brilliantly yesterday to take Italy to the bronze medal position in the team final. Be interesting to see how she's feeling today. Hope she didn't celebrate too much. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, it was a bit shorter today. The double twist was round, but the, uh, the, she didn't have quite as much time in the air and had to take the big step on landing. You need to look at the arm contact here. She was very slow getting her hands off. That may have caused her to under-rotate. Yeah, very one in front of the other, and they were bent. She really had to work hard there for double twist. If you don't get clean and fast off the top, look at that. She gave herself a lot of problems, did really well to get that round. Actually, quite a different technique to what we've seen from a lot of the gymnasts because she took a lot of twist off the top of the platform, whereas most of the others we've seen lift quite clean and twist in the air. I don't think she really had a choice there, Chris. Her shoulder was gone when she hit the top of the horse, yeah, but she did it well. Well, a 14.241 awarded from the judges. 5-8 difficulty. This one is slightly easier. Difficulty of five. You can see the marks there on the runway. 25 meter run up. The gymnasts pierce them out so they know exactly to the tall length. The springboard is perfect for them. Right, what second vault have we got here? The handspring straight front. Wow. Well, she was overextended. It was beyond the straight. And she didn't know much about the landing, but fortunately she hit in exactly the right place. It was mesmerising to watch, wasn't it? Well, you really need to bang your heels over your head and leave them in. It's a very courageous vault. Watch the heels. Try, drive, drive. Try. That a bit of surprise to land as she did. She did a great job. Look at this. I am not surprised to meet this floor. I knew it would be there. That's a good vault. Not as highly tariffed as some because there aren't any twists added. When she's perfected it and can add a twist, then it'll be seriously competitive at this level. I never know why they don't give that a higher score. Well, I was going to say, Such a yeah. difficult vault. 14.003. Uh, I think extra points for entertainment on that vault. <laughs> well, Julia Steingruber finishes off this vault final. She qualified third. A regular European and world vault finals. You can't write this young lady off. Look at that, one and a half twist, but plenty of rotation, too much in fact, and that'll be quite costly, five to eight tenths, possibly five. Good vault, that wasn't it? Oh, very powerful vault. She's um, put up for a tariff of 6.3, which is the straight front somersault with the one and a half twist. Her hips were quite piked, but the judges allow a bit of tolerance for that. You can see she used quite a piked action to create the twist. And uh, if they decide it was piked, then they downgrade the value of it. They have got video footage as well, haven't they, that they can look back at? They have, but it was a very well-performed vault. Really high, good line. They've she's got given it. it. Yeah, she's got it, and it's a 15.216. That's actually the highest score we've seen so far. So... Ms. Bassa could be under threat here. One more vault to go. We'll 
know the positioning. So, Steingruber, I think going yes, going for a 5.2. So needs the execution here. So important that this is almost perfect. Medal in a grasp. That'll do, I think. Clean, not difficult. Just a single twist. Again, maybe a little bit tight, was that? Or? Well, yes, I think so, because the ball she's claimed is the Sukahara straight with full twist. So here's an interesting point then. When does a straight become a pike? That is the great debate. <laughs> she piked off and then the full twist. Most people pike in and kick out straight to make the twists. But she was piked all the way there. Yes, she was, and uh, that really, they'll, they'll give it its tariff, I think. You see, she turns on, and then she makes the full twist off. And I think they'll give it as a, as a straight full twist, but it will be quite heavily deductible. The pike is quite simply a, a bend in the body, but she's... Wow, hang on. 14.624 puts her into third. There you go, there is your European champion, Sandra Isbasa, retains that title. Giuseppe did what she could, but it wasn't enough. Champion again. Consistency again. And absolutely delighted and worthy champion, certainly to my opinion. So Sandra Isbasa retains the title as European vault champion. Oksana Shunas... Oksana Shuzapatina, she takes silver again as she did last year. Sandra Isbasa, again, European vault champion. Oksana Shuzopatina fought as best she could, but it's silver for her. And Julia Steingruber, the last gymnast to go, takes the bronze. Now say hello to uh, a new member of the commentary team. Hello to Beth Tweddle. Hi. Good. Now, Beth, you're going to sit in and talk us through some of these routines, aren't you, in this um, to, yes. bars final? I mean, you must be having mixed emotions at the moment because you're about to see your title will go to somebody else. How, yeah. how is, is, is it? Do you feel slightly odd about that? Talking it's about it? It's very strange. Um, being in the commentary box rather than being down on the floor with all those nerves. I've got slightly different nerves being up here today. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Chris is up here as well, so we're going to kind of do this as a three, aren't we, as we go? It'll be lovely. Um, so, yeah, we're going to um, in, wait for the gymnasts are just about to come in, I think. And, um, I mean, we talked about Victoria Kamova earlier on, world champion. Do you think she's going to be able to do, uh, do herself proud here? I hope so. I mean, she's used to performing under pressure, so um, she's got the highest difficulty and the most consistent routine, I would say. Hopefully I haven't given her the kiss of death now, so... Uh, She'll be looking to take that title. And also marching out is Ruby Harold, 15 years old. I'll just tell everybody who's in the thing. Here we go. So who do we look out for here? Well, Victoria Kamova, world champion. Ruby Harold will be going seventh in this competition as well. But don't rule out Yuna Dufane either. And Grishna. OK, here we go. How do you think Ruby will be feeling, Beth? Um, she was slightly nervous in the warm-up, but I just told her to go out and enjoy it. Um, her coach spoke to me and said, what advice can you give her? But she's done all the hard work just to be in her first European final is an amazing achievement. So go out, enjoy it, and uh, see what it comes away with. What, what frame of mind would you be in at this stage as you're marching out? I mean, are you, do you notice what's going on around, or are you ultimately focused? You don't tend to notice what's going on. Occasionally you notice the blue flags, but you don't know who's behind them. It's just a case of you go into autopilot and 
It's, it's going to be quite hard because she's seventh up. She's literally having to march out, and then she'll, I'm not sure if they're allowed out in the back gym to warm up again. The fact that she's got no handguards on, I'm sure she will be able to. And at this stage, is it almost a blur? You just hear your name called and you stand up there? Literally, yeah, you just stood there. Nerves are going in your stomach and you just wait for your name to be presented. I think, though, Beth, one of the things about a podium is actually you, you've not got such a sense of the audience. You're quite removed from it. Like at, at home in little domestic competitions, you can see the audience, see your mum sat there, and actually it can be quite oppressive, whereas you get out on a big arena like this and you're apart from them. And in actual fact, it's, I think, it's a little, as a coach, it's easier to be in that zone. It is a lot easier. I mean, when we're at like, the British Championships, like Chris was saying, you are a lot closer to the audience. So you can tend to notice your mum or dad or whoever's around. Um, but when you're here, you're so focused on your job and you've got the judges in front of you that um, you do go into that zone. Really she's got a nice smile on yeah. her, she's like enjoying it. Well, that's the key, isn't it? It's how do you react at this stage, you know, so early on, really, in her kind of international career, I guess, and it's just taking these experiences, you know, understanding what they do to your body and how you react to it. That is the big thing for her, because she is only still 15 years of age, she's got a lot more competitions ahead of her, and the fact that she's made a European final already, she can take experience from every competition that she does. OK, well, the first gymnast to go will be King Boy from Germany. She was third at the Euros in Berlin, in front of the home crowd. So the bars would already have been prepared for her, because you can move them in and out a little bit, can't yeah, you? Yeah, the difficult thing um, with a European final at a senior level is you don't get to touch their apparatus. They will have touched it in the one-hour touch, and then they won't have seen them, touched them, felt them for an hour, and they literally just have to go. And that's the hardest part about a final. And do they feel quite different bars to bars, and different they makes are. of bars? And... Yeah, some bars are quite bouncy, some are quite solid. So luckily, because she's first up, you can set them just before um, the podium session finishes and she's first. First to go then. This bar's final is the fifth highest qualifier from Germany. Kim Bui. Good, strong handstand, gets the difficult element out of the way straight away. The move with a half turn from low to high. Good pirouette into the ginger somersault. Little hop there and little pause on bent arms, but another good somersault and getting her linkages from the Jaeger straight to the pack and straight to the move, the Shaposhnikova, back down to the bar, low bar. This is how you build your difficulty. Little bit of a muscle up to handstand, tiny bit bent arms on the Giants, but a big dismount. That's a good first solid routine. Wow, she had a little moment in the middle, but she kept the composure, Beth, and carried on, and that's the key. That is the key, you know, to carry on. As she can count, I mean, sometimes you feel like it's not quite going right, but you've got to carry on. The fact that she had that nice finger and lovely straight arms, and then... As she, Chris was saying, everything that's connected gives you bonuses, so that's how you build up the difficulty um, for these routines. Just see her hop into the upper, uh, different grip. The gymnasts have to show two different grips. You can see how the bar is working with her up into the dismount. And that dismount is one that you always want for the competition. You aim for it every day in training, but it doesn't always go. And obviously she's got her teammates with her. Um, if you don't always have, like, if you're not first up, you sometimes need the bars chalking, so you can bring one gymnast with you that's allowed to chalk the bars up. So quite often you'll see one of the gymnasts and their coach with them. Interestingly, the German camp have already had success. They won the junior bars title here. Well, she was awarded higher difficulty than she was in qualification, a 6-2, overall score of 14.7.